Hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Gomatsan. And yes, believe it or not, unfortunately, I had to begin filling our reservoir here without you. But I do have good reasoning for that, and I'll get to it in a minute. But first, a vile force of darkness has arrived. Now, these goblins here are the first to see our filled reservoir. Rather, partially filled reservoir, I suppose. And can you imagine what they're thinking? These poor bastards, I'll tell you. I actually kind of feel bad for them. Kinda. Anyways... Now, the water down here is actually two Z-levels deep now, and the third has begun filling, but that's more than enough to drown some goblins. And with that in mind, let's get this show on the road. Now, the dwarves and leopard seal man are safely down in the fortress right now. Nobody's above ground at the moment, and everything's just going swimmingly. Alright, they've begun to cross the bridge. I mean, can I tell you how excited I am right now? Because, guys, I'm pretty excited. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to wait for these guys to get down to the drowning chamber first before I do this whole bridge thing here. I'm going to try to drown the front half of the siege, and then when the rest try to escape, I'm going to throw them off the bridges, just to make sure we get maximum death. It's going to be swell. We've had quite a few goblins escape recently, and I'm sure those goblins told the rest of the nightmare of webbing about our new walls, but no goblins have seen the water yet. So imagine these guys surprised when they have to cross this bridge across this gigantic lake here. I mean, th that's a beautiful thing. I'm telling you. Crossing the bridge, looking down at the still rushing water. That water sure does seem turbulent at the moment. You poor, poor bastards. Standard siege, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half pages of invaders. No trolls, big dogs, demon kings, anything like that. Fairly standard. Just 247 goblins, soon to be floating corpses. Oh, Gomathzon. Alrighty, now the goblins have advanced far enough down the tunnel, methinks. And so let's pull these levers here. Let's close up the lower gate first. All right, now the lower gate is closed, so the goblins are now stopped in their tracks effectively. They can no longer get down into the fortress, including all these fellas up here on the bridge. And so then, let's take a look down here again and pull this lever here, the lever that controls said bridges. Mm, pull it, please. Here we go. Lever is pulled. Oh my lord, who is ready for this? There they go. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Ah uh, yes, you can see down here, quite a few goblins did land in the water. And there's virtually no way for them to get out now. A couple died on impact. That's nice. And a few actually landed here on top of the entry tunnel. And unfortunately for them, they can't get back over to the land from there. <laughs> you can see all the mist from where the goblins landed in the water. Amazing. And so with all the goblins stopped here, I'm gonna pull this lever to start the drowning chamber. Lever is pulled, and here we go. Mm. Beautiful. And the trap worked wonderfully like usual. Good to see. Let's just give it a moment here. Alright, there we are. Now the siege is still ongoing, even though more than half the invaders are now dead. You know what? I actually feel pretty bad for these guys. Alright, I'll tell you what. Get that bridge down. Get out of here, you scamps. There we are. Bridge is down again. You guys get out of here. You learn your lesson. Just don't come back around these parts again, you hear? Yeah, I mean, I think they've learned a very valuable lesson today. I mean, you gotta respect a dwarf's property, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess I lied. <laughs> Rat bastards. Unfortunately, it does look like a couple got across, but no matter. You know, I guess I'm gonna keep doing this bridge trap till all these goblins are dead, or at least most of them anyways. It certainly is fun to watch. Oh, so close. Hey, maybe next time. What do you think, buddy? Wanna give it a try? A couple more goblins having to go at it. Oh, this guy's pretty close. He might make it across. Almost. <laughs> I think he was just smashed. I think he just got squished in these two bridges here. Oh my god, that was amazing. Alright, just shut off the drowning chamber. Draining it out. Let's see if the rest of those goblins who are stuck down there can get across. Probably not, would be my guess. Yeah, I mean, like, definitely not. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, that looks to be the majority of them, for sure. Just a few green bastards still stuck down in the drowning chamber. So how about we open up the gate and send out the ochre beards? Sounds good to me. Move out, warriors. For the glory of Gomatzan. You poor, poor goblins. I'll tell you. I mean, it's just a disaster for them. A complete slaughter. Not a single chance to be stood. <laughs> Instant. That was Addis right there. Took his head clean off. I like it. Oh, here comes Bim doing some fighting. He got his spear stuck in a goblin's eye. That's amazing. And that's all of them. Not a single goblin remains. Beautiful. 
just how we like it. Good job, warriors. Anyways, everyone back to work. A very good siege. Now, then. Right, the whole lake thing here. Let's zoom out a little bit first. Now, would you take a look at that? A thing of beauty, really. Already two Z-levels completely full of water and working on a third. And I really wish we could say we were anywhere near having this place be full, but we're not. Now, let's see, I started filling this place right after I finished recording the last episode. The following day, I turned on Dwarf Fortress first thing, started up the pumps, and just let it fill all day long. And by the end of the day, we only barely had the very first layer filled. It took a long time to do that. Most likely because it's being filled by a brook. Plus, it doesn't fill in the winter. It just turns to ice, which is actually pretty cool looking. Can't wait to show you that. But yeah, just to make sure I had enough time to record this episode, I had to start it early. But you really didn't miss out on much. Nothing happened in all that time. I zoomed back in here. Would you take a look at how cool this is here? All these goblin carcasses just floating around in the water now. That is gonna stink. Plus, imagine over time how many bones will be collected at the bottom of this lake here. Goblins get thrown into the lake here, and as they struggle around in the murky water, something emerges. What is it? Staring back at them. A pockmarked, waterlogged goblin skull. A grim reminder of the hundreds that came before. I like it. Uh, anywho. Oh, Bim's house here. What a cool idea, huh? Didn't work. Didn't work at all. Just a, just a heads up. If you were planning on trying this little idea yourself, doesn't work. Oh well. You know, I bet it would have worked if I put a windmill coming out of the top of his house through the water, and then had a water pump in here that was pumping all the water out. I mean, it would have to run continuously, and I'd have to modify the structure a little bit, but I bet I could get that to work. In fact, I suppose if I was daring enough, I can come down here in the winter when the lake is frozen, dig down to Bim's house, install a water pump and a windmill, and get the place working absolutely fine. Food for thought. We'll see what happens. And if we take a look over here, you can see our adamantine column, uh, completely gone. There's nothing here anymore, because we mined the entire thing out. Pretty cool, huh? And what, pray tell, did we do with all that mined out adamantine, you ask? Well, we turned it into armor, of course. Full suits of dwarven armor. Every single dwarf in the military has one now. That's pretty sick, huh? Although, I still haven't made a suit for Bim. Frankly, I don't think we have enough for his big old leopard seal body, but whatever. I personally think his blazing metal armor looks pretty cool. You know, something silly I had noticed between episodes is that I don't think I ever showed off this temple to Tomud over here. I mean, it's finished, for the most part. All right, now bear with me here. You can see her hands and the top of her head here, her forehead and wrists, her nose, eyes, arms, her torso and bosoms, her waist, legs, feet, and see, down at the bottom here is where the problem is encountered. Instead of being a nice temple area here, I instead have it filled up with a bunch of workshops, and this is where the dwarves do most of their work. I guess that kind of works, though. I mean, it's not a temple per se, but the dwarves get to ply their trades under the watchful nose of Tomud, and gain from her the strength that is required to live in such a tough place as Gomathzan. I like that. Instead of being a temple that you have to feel obligated to visit from time to time, we have our temple to Toma just incorporated into our everyday lives, which I think is pretty cool. Now, let's see, what else do I have to show you? Now, while Lake Legend Helm was filling, believe it or not, we had quite a few artifacts made. Like a whole bunch of them. And you know what, just because this episode is taking a ludicrous amount of time to record, I'm gonna show you every single one of them. I hope you like some artifacts. Let's get to it. First we have... Like Hot Lemur, Ash Sazat, Ink Nadir, The Distracting Stroke, A Galena Crown, Worth almost half a million dwarf value. Pretty crazy, huh? A Galena Crown, Decorated with persimmon wood and encircled with bands of oval Galena Capricons and square cut almondines. This object is adorned with hanging rings of cat bone and menaces with spikes of tetrahedrite, aluminum, adamantine, and sheep wool. And on the item is an image of Snamaz Planhated, the goblin, and Bim Silversnarl in persimmon wood. Bim is striking down the goblin with his hammer. Pretty cool, huh? Yep, I'm a fan. I especially like the adamantine touch. Very cool. Next up, we have Usith Mubun, Grim Practice. Yet another crown, but this one's made of tunnel tube. Worth 350,000 value. Not bad, not bad. A tunnel tube crown, encircled with bands of cushioned raw adamantine cabicons, rhinoceros leather, and giant parakeet leather. This object menaces with spikes of pigtail, almandine, and morion. On the item is an image of a square cut gem in tunnel tube. On the items, an image of Council Disperses, the Socket of Fragrances, the Blazing Metal Animal Trap we had made earlier, in silver. Not too bad, huh? I'm actually a big fan of this one. I picture it being kind of ugly, really. I mean, there's so many different things in here. The monarch who wears this crown will be one to remember indeed. Next up, we have Nebreth Huzlier Aluth Neshast, Skirt Faction, The Defect of Risk, a Black Cap Bed, worth only 13,000. 
Shameful. You know, fun fact, this one was actually made by the former mayor, the mayor we had had since we discovered that adamantine, and up to a couple episodes ago. I have no idea how he managed to fall out of popular favor. I mean, he saw Gomathzon through a demon siege. Hell, I'd vote for him. But whatever. Uh, a black cab bed. It is encrusted with table cut moss agates, round schist capicons, and rectangular tetrahedrite capicons. Decorated with black cap and chicken bone, and encircled with bands of llama wool. On the item is an image of bonobos in black cap. Very interesting indeed. Hell, I'd sleep in it. And next up, we have Menkathir Shigagminbaz. Lash nourished. The static enchantments. A yellow zircon coffer. Worth 76,000. Not bad. It is encrusted with oval galena capicons, decorated with cap bone, and encircled with bands of point cut morions and round schist capicons. It menaces with spikes of morion, galena, and alpaca wool. And there's an image of Einol Hailed Metal the Dwarf in Yellow Zircon, as well as an image of a guinea hen being shot to death by a goblin with an iron crossbow during what was known as the Steamy Siege. And to finish it off, there's an image of the Heavenly Ships, the Blazing Metal Breastplate in Copper. Not too shabby. Very cool. And next we have Bassanestel, Spray Allies, a short Grey Langer leather skirt. That's right, a short skirt, worth 17,000. Not very much at all. It is encrusted with oval schist cabicons and encircled with bands of black cap and cushioned tetrahedrite cabicons. This object menaces with spikes of grey langer leather, black cap, and tetrahedrite. There's an image of blood amaranths and grey langer leather on it, as well as an image of Ashtan Anvil Talk, the dwarf, and dwarves in dog bone, which relates to that dwarf ascending to the position of queen. And also, oddly enough, there's an image of Zuspgas Mirror Monsters, who is a goblin, killing another goblin known as Gosath Realms Lurched with a copper spear. Very odd. I'm not too sure what that's all about, but hey, whatever. I like it. Next we have Kugshil Godan, the Worthless Rope. The Worthless Rope. The Worthless Rope. Whatever. A Goblin Cap Crutch, which is actually pretty cool. It's worth 115,000. It is encrusted with table cut clear tourmalines and radiant cut violent specertines, and encircled with bands of round schist capicons and oval black opal capicons. This object menaces with spikes of Goblin Cap, clear tourmaline, schist, and kunzite. On the item is an image of square cut gems in Goblin Cap, as well as an image of Atir Even Armors the Dwarf in Bloodthorn. Surprisingly intricate for a crutch, you know, I was seriously considering trying to get Addis to use this thing, but I don't even know how I would do that. I feel like it would just end up being a gigantic pain in the ass, but maybe I'm just lazy. That's probably what it is. Anywho, now we're going to finish this off with one last artifact, Batanthos Butt Alakagest. Calms Drills. The Ace Gloss. A Raw Adamantine Scepter. That sounds pretty cool, huh? Now, get this. This single artifact here is worth 1,022,400 value. That is insane. This is the first artifact I've had that's been worth more than a million value. Just crazy, really. Let's take a look. It is encrusted with oval galanic capicons, decorated with cat leather, and encircled with bands of giant cave spider silk and single cut yellow grossulars. This object is adorned with hanging rings of raw adamantine and porcupine leather, and menaces with spikes of cat leather. On the item is an image of a dwarf raising an artifact amulet they had just created in adamantine, like pure adamantine too, which is pretty cool. Especially when it's a raw adamantine scepter, kind of goes along well with it, I'd say. Oh, and there's also an image of the heavenly ships, the blazing metal breastplate in black zircon. Pretty cool, huh? A whole slew of artifacts. Artifacts which are just strewn all over the Temple to Tomod over here. Yeah, I really don't have a good place for them, so often a dwarf will just make an artifact and leave it at their workshop. Completely unattended. Well, it's just an artifact, a dwarven artifact. Yeah, no worries. Just leave it there. It's absolutely fine. You damn dirty dwarves. Well, to each their own. Alright, and with all that out of the way, I'm gonna get back to work. Uh, work which entails almost literally nothing. Just kind of sitting here watching water rise slowly. This is gonna take so long, guys. It's ridiculous. But it's gonna be worth it when it's done. I'm hoping we get another siege in the meantime. It'd be a shame if that was the only chance we got to use this trap. Well, that being said, I'll get back to my water watching in just a moment. And here they come once more. You know, it's hard to tell whether the warriors of the Nightmare of Webbing are really just this determined or really just this stupid. It really is impressive either way. I mean, if they're this determined, I have to give them some credit. I mean, come on now. They actually don't stand a chance. Well, anyways, they're heading in again, once again from the top. Oh my god. I can't imagine myself ever getting sick of that. Just beautiful. Back open for business? Well, hey now, looks like we landed a goblin over here on the memorial hall. Shouldn't be a problem though. I'll have the ochre beards take care of him real quick. 
Oh, there we go. And dead. Very good. I mean, at this point, I'd have to say this is my favorite trap I've ever made in a dwarf fortress. This water trap here in conjunction with the bridge up top. Just so devilishly effective, I'd say. I'm gonna tell you what, I guess I haven't given up fully on the quest for balance. Even if I do only have this one episode left. Does that sound insane? It probably does. Tell you what, I'm gonna finish off these goblins here, okay? Show off a couple of artifacts, and then I'm gonna let some more time pass. Let our reservoir fill up just a little bit more, and hopefully we get another siege. Maybe two more sieges, three more sieges. I mean, if this is gonna be the end of the series, I'm going out with a bang, damn it. I want these goblins hurting. All right, all these guys down here are dead. I'm gonna start up the pumps, lower the bridges, there we go. And now all we have to do is take care of these retreating goblins. Like so. <laughs> yep, I love that. That's for sure. Gomathzon will leave its mark on this wretched, stinking world. Even if it's always the age of the goblins. The dwarves will never be defeated, damn it. Just not gonna happen. Alright, almost done here. Almost. And so let's have a look at these artifacts here. First we have Themoradas. Boil passes. A mica door. Worth 10,000. Not very much at all. It is a mica door. It is encircled with bands of rectangular lapis lazuli cabicons. This object menaces with spikes of mica and coyote leather. On the item is an image of dwarves and pigtail. The dwarves are traveling, which relates to the foundation of Legend Hell. In the year 1051, boy that's really something actually. It's currently the year 1067, so Gomathzon's been around for 16 years now. Wow. On the item is an image of two three-pointed stars in deer leather. Not too bad, not too bad. Hmm, you know. I've got a plan for that, but we'll get to that in a moment. And one more artifact here. Oh, so detoured by Dakamal. Bone boulders. The act of teachers. A blazing metal figurine. Worth 730,000. An awful lot. And look at that description, huh? My god. Okay, let's see. This is a figurine of Ohm Dust Urn, the Phantom of Bones, the Crone of the Night in blazing metal, and this creature is traveling. It is encrusted with rectangular schist cabicons, decorated with alpaca wool, and encircled with bands of blazing metal. This object menaces with spikes of cave spider silk and pigtail. On the item is an image of a dwarf being struck down by a jabberer, which I've yet to see in this series, which is an event that took place in the year 75 during the attack of mobs. Very interesting. On the item is an image of Wet Notches, the Brutal Brew, the blazing metal amulet, and Bloodthorn, as well as an image of a baguette cut gem in Morion. Fascinating. Quite a busy figurine. Anywho, now let's see, we got that artifact door, which cannot be destroyed by invaders of any variety. You know, something about artifact doors, hatches, that sort of stuff, just makes me want to make a secret passage, you know? And so I think I'm going to do that, but I'll show it off next time I come back. We have some more waiting to do, both for the water to rise and for more sieges, hopefully. I've got my fingers crossed for that Demon King, but I guess we'll see. In any event, I'll be back in a moment. Alright guys, the goblins have returned once more, to no great effect as usual. Siege number 3 this episode, by the way. That really is something. There's about 250 goblins per siege, and let's say just for the heck of it that 25 goblins from each siege do end up escaping, which isn't the case by the way. That's gonna end up being 675 goblins we've killed this episode alone, assuming everything goes well with this siege I suppose. Now this siege here, uh, what a pain in the ass, I'll tell ya. Whenever I get a siege at this point, the game slows down immensely, and here we see the goblins down here down to the south, right? Just about to go onto this bridge. And we can keep going down this way here. More goblins just along this road here. And then down over this way here. Now the goblins typically appear down here in this corner, right around here, but this time they didn't. Nope, this time they had to go across this entire wall right here. All right, you can still see quite a few goblins up here. They had to go across this piece of ground up here, and then across the top of this wall, all the way down here, right? Till right about here and they had to come all the way up this slope right here. Down, down, down. Cause they appeared up in the top right corner. The game's probably been running for two hours straight just waiting for these goblins to get to the bridge here. Yeah, this siege kind of sucks, really. And unfortunately, they're so stretched out at this point that I feel like if I wait for them to get down to the drowning chamber then throw the back half of the siege off the bridge, there's still going to be quite a few goblins who haven't even gotten to the bridge yet. And those ones will likely escape. So I'm just trying to throw the first few off the bridge here in an attempt to get them all grouped up again. So, I mean, yeah, hopefully it all works. Oh boy, that was a close one. Little shit. I just have to be careful not to kill too many of them before the rest of the group gets here. I don't want to scare away the whole back half of the siege. That'd suck. Alright, we did that bridge trap a couple more times, and now the goblins have advanced far enough down into the tunnel here. So we're gonna close this bridge, and we'll drown the rest. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, another great success. These guys think they're escaping. That's cute. Nope. You could try again if you like. Just a few left. Well, that appears to be all of them, except for, well, one, I guess, a mace man, who oddly enough is stuck in the Drowning Chamber Reservoir. Well, he's gonna be sitting there a while, I think. But how did he get in there, you ask? Well, you see. 
Over right here next to the road, we have this water. Water which was once very shallow, and dwarves would walk through it all the time. No problem really. Now a funny little thing here, when you chop down trees, uh, usually there's no hole left afterwards, unless there's an open space underneath said tree, say like right here, where you can see the reservoir. So. When we had cut down a bunch of trees here in preparation for filling up this area, there were also a bunch of holes in the ground right here. So my dwarves who were walking through this water here would every once in a while get sucked down through one of these holes and thrown into the reservoir. Now because there's a lot of waiting here in this episode, I wasn't really watching, paying attention when this was happening, and so we lost a few dwarves. Down to 64 dwarves now. I believe we had something like 78. So yeah, we lost uh, a few to this ridiculous mishap. Just imagine walking through this water here and then just being sucked down just gone. I mean, I guess you can't blame the dwarves too much. It's ankle deep water, you can't really see those holes. Someone just gets sucked away and then they're gone. That'd be kind of hard to notice. Yeah, most of the carcasses are piled up over here now. Quite a few dogs and cats. I had since set up appropriate traffic zones, so hopefully that won't happen again. But I guess we'll see. Actually, this dwarf here, this is Lymel, the one from last episode. The cowardly dog beater who had her leg knocked off by a ghost. Yeah, that's her. What a stupid dwarf. Oh well. But anyways, those holes are still here and the goblins don't follow that whole traffic rule thing. So they walked right through this area and a bunch of them got sucked through. You can see all their carcasses just scattered around the area. Yeah, quite a few actually. I bet I could turn that into an interesting trap in the future. I'll have to keep it in mind. However, another pain in the ass facet of this gem here. Now because we have these holes here, water has been leaking down into the drowning chamber reservoir. And so when we last ran this trap, there was way more water in here than usual and we couldn't suck it all back up to the reservoir. So now I'm gonna have to drain out a couple levels of water here. Uh, somewhere else. I don't know where, but I guess I'm gonna try to figure it out. But that's fairly mundane, nothing exciting there. Now let's see here. While I was gone, we had another artifact made. Katandirug, the channels of brutalizing. A dog bone figurine of a goblin. Pretty interesting. What's really interesting is that this artifact was made by Addis the Balance Seeker. I was really praying she wouldn't go insane. It's worth 24,000. Not too great. This is a figurine of a goblin known as Amzu Quickness Black and Bim Silversnarl, the rapid violator of shadows. Bim is killing this goblin with his iron warhammer. That's pretty cool, huh? I'm glad that Addis chose to do a figure of Bim for her artifact. It is encrusted with oval lapis lazuli capicons and rectangular schist capicons, decorated with dog bone and encircled with bands of rose cut morions, cushioned galena capicons, and dog leather. This object menaces with spikes of galena. On the item is an image of wet notches the brutal brew, the blazing metal amulet, and morion. I mean, really, when you get down to it, it's fairly standard, but it was made by Addis, so I really like this figurine. Good job. Now, let's see, what else? Ah yes, that artifact door. I chose to make a secret passage into Gomathzon up here in the northwest hills. Right here, see it? It's as of yet unfinished, but I have that door out front right here, currently locked. Now, this passage here leads down, 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 whole long ways, down to here, to a bridge, which is, uh, well, unfinished. I'm gonna have to finish that right now, actually. Now, I figured this would be cool to have to come down here and walk across this bridge and then through this door here. Just picture what this would look like. Looking out down here into this black cave, look how far down this thing goes. But the path continues down this way here, just kind of meandering to this staircase right here next to this second cavern. And this one goes down a long ways too. Down, 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 down. And it keeps going down along this stalactite here, connects back up to the ground, and then down a little bit farther to this level here. And then this little path here connects up to the fortress. Pretty cool, huh? I just always really like the idea of a back entrance into a dwarven fortress. A little door tucked into the hills, kind of unassuming, that leads to a dwarven city below. Yeah, I like it. Oh, and actually, one last thing before I let you go. Lake Gomathzahan is now completely full. Or rather, as full as it's gonna be anyways. That's pretty neat, huh? If we have a look over in the west here, you can see the water is now pouring out of this fortification here. Down, down, down to this brook, and it's just continuing on its way. That's nice. Yeah, everything's working completely fine there. Now, I'm still hoping to get at least one more siege during this episode. Hopefully nothing crazy happens in the meantime, but I guess we'll see what happens. I'll be right back. Finally, a vile force of darkness has arrived. Siege number four this episode. The game's been running near constantly for an entire day. It's been nearly two years since that last siege. Anyways, let's see what we got. Eh, just a whole load of goblins once more. Well, whatever. Come on in, fellas. The water's fine. Well, at least they appeared in the bottom left corner again. It shouldn't take nearly as long for them to get to the fortress. First, we'll cut off the head of the snake. There we are. Beauteous. And now the body can wriggle down to the fortress. Alright, the goblins have advanced far enough. But there's a problem. Because a whole bunch of goblins still aren't down in the drowning chambers or even to the bridge yet. And so I'm going to send out the Ochre Beards. I'm going to try to cut back the first half of the siege just a little bit so the rest of those guys have time to get to the bridge at least. And then hopefully I can get the Ochre Beards back down here before they encounter the rest of the siege and continue on their way up the Drowning Chamber. That might end up being a bit much for them to handle. And so, Ochre Beards, I'm going to have you guys kill uh, just these guys here, okay? 
And I'm really hoping they don't go too overboard with this. Good luck, warriors. Dwarves are moving out. Combat has begun. Goblins are dying. No problem whatsoever. Keep going, guys. Hurry up. Okay, all those goblins have died. Good. Now back down to the fortress. Let's go. Go ahead. Oh, hey now, Bim. What the hell are you doing, man? Alright, well, it looks like, unfortunately, Bim is going up by himself. I don't know why. Back down to the fortress. Come on, buddy. Go ahead, you moron. Alright, I, I, I guess Bim's fighting. We're going back down to the fortress. What are you doing, dude? Just kind of taunting the rest down into the fortress, I guess. Alright, don't scare me like that, buddy, okay? Alright, now it doesn't look like we could send them out safely again without facing the entire goblin army. And they have advanced far enough down the tunnel here, so let's start up the trap. Oh, you may note that there's no more water in here. I had installed a floodgate up here, and any excess water we could just drain out into the caverns. No big problem. But anyways, pull the levers, please. There's the bridge, and the lower gate, just in time. So let's start up the drowning chamber. Oh, and this time, by the way, the reservoir up top is completely full of water. So this whole cavern should just fill straight up. Here we are. Very good. Oh, and here's something interesting, actually. We have this second water passage here that we used to fill up the drowning chamber initially. I can dump this water down there, too. And this water isn't just connected up to the brook. It's connected up to the lake up top. Hmm. Yeah, let's give it a whirl, huh? Oh, my God. Horrible lag. <laughs> yeah, this'll do it. There we are. Holy shit, what happened up here? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> the entire entry tower filled up with water. <laughs> oh my god. Beauteous. And it's not even a problem, because we could suck water up to the reservoir and dump all the extra down into the caves. Not even a slight issue. My god, do I love this game. I'll tell you. Oh, hey now, that could be a problem. It looks like the reservoir filled up entirely with water from those little tree holes in the ceiling, so we can't pump any water up to there anymore. Great. No, that's good. It's good. It's great. And we're gonna have to dump all this water out into the caves. <laughs> that's an impressive amount, too. Well, whatever. Yeah, another goblin siege foiled. And well foiled, I'd say. Well, Gomatzan, you certainly had an unassuming beginning. But look at you now. The sparkling lake of Gomatzan, littered with hundreds of goblin carcasses, Gomathzon, which is now home to Bim and Addis, a new hero that had originated from this fortress here. Surely many future generations of dwarves will tell legends of this place. How a small group of dwarves was able to kill siege after siege of goblins. You will truly be missed, Gomathzon. But the future looks forward, not back. And new adventures always await us. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gomathzon, the final episode of Gomathzon. And I do hope you'll join me next time, where I'm not too sure what the hell I'm gonna end up doing. Oh, wait, hold up a second. One more artifact here, almost forgot. Zavaz Mingtooth, the momentous contingencies, a Bloodthorn Floodgate, worth 2400. This is a Bloodthorn Floodgate. All craft ship is of the highest quality. This object menaces with spikes of Bloodthorn. What a piece of crap. And now, if you'd be so kind to take that artifact and the rest of them and throw them in the pile and get back to work. And by the way, terribly sorry if you find that annoying, but it's not like I can stop now. We're almost at the end of the series. But anyways, until next time, you bearded bastards.